to the lesson, check the description box below in your YouTube player for tabs and backing tracks on my website, uh, information about the sound tools I'm using today, and access to other goodies via my Patreon page. Continuing. The opening bit is a G minor pentatonic run. Now, if here's a standard G minor pentatonic. I'm actually playing it out of the next position up. Let's look at that. Starting on our D string, five, eight, five. Back it up one, back to that eight, and then crawl up five, six, seven, to that six there. So here we are already at the first difficulty we're gonna encounter. And this was the, basically the whole principle of this lesson was to see, can we hit all six strings and only get one? Let's talk about that. So with my left hand, you can see I have my beautiful 1966 tiny little toy guitar and my Fender Mustang, my good buddy. I have my index finger down on that five. My thumb is loosely around and the index finger is touching in such a way that those are muted. So side note, this hand matters too. Um, I've noticed some of my students, let's see if I turn out this way, might choke up on the pick. Can you see that? I think you can see that where like a lot of books and people will say to play like that, which is great for heavy metal and jazz for like, you know, but I actually play, I don't know if this is right. Um, I actually play with my pick loosely out so that <laughs> it's more of an extension of my index finger. And so it actually means when I hit a lot of the times my nail hits too probably not right so take that with a grain of salt ask 99 different teachers how they do things you're going to get 99 different answers but that's how i do it it's and it's because it's when it's tight like this it pulls your whole hand into the guitar so i am muted So that, that's the, even that opening lick is a great thing to practice because that's really what this is about, is being able to hit six, get one. Look at that. BTW, by the way, there's slow down gears in YouTube. Over here, we'll take it down to three quarter speed or up there, we'll take it down to three, or a half speed, or you can speed it up if you have a short attention span. Either way, also your arrow keys you can use on your keyboard to go five seconds back, five seconds forward. Great way to practice. There's our opening lick. And then, which is actually Soul Man in a minor key. <laughs> There's Soul Man, and I did a lesson on Steve Cropper stuff like two years ago, and this little idea of like, what about in a minor key? Is the same idea. This is a G minor arpeggio here, or triad, sorry, same difference. Seven, six, nope, wait, seven, eight, six. Looks like a D minor, but it's up here, a G minor. Same thing. I'm hitting all six, my thumb is loosely there. My nail's hitting. That's really a, a, um, an F chord in second inversion, five, six, five. Sure looks like a D though, doesn't it? Same thing. Hitting all six, getting only one. G minor, there's a G minor. Three, three, three. Hitting all six, getting only one. Another, I guess every second of this workout is a week of practice if, if, if you're not super hip with the funk muting thing. That was the idea. That's that lick. Then I bash on some octaves, three and five, same thing. Look at that, hitting, hit, hitting everybody, only getting those two. And then what am I doing? That's right half. Um, <laughs> right out of Funky Monks. Uh, what was I? Yeah, so then again, if I had G minor to what's really an F to a G minor, then I'm like, oh, here's another G minor, 5, 3, 3. 
to an F there. Three, two, one. And then, yeah, this lick. That, that, that I mean, if you know Chili Peppers, uh, that's, that's, a, that's straight out of a Chili Pepper song. Five, sorry, three, five, one, slide back. And then I was like, ah, what chord would I go to next? So I'm actually playing around between a G minor groove and an A diminished. Because A diminished is kind of a sub for D7. So that pushes into my other favorite guitar player, Mark Rabot territory. A diminished chord is nothing more than his endless sequence or diminished seventh triad is nothing more than an endless sequence of minor thirds. So if the root chord is five, nobody home, four, five, you can invert it up to here. Yeah, seven, five, seven. So there's A. Same thing, thumb around. Uh, just, yeah, just like, I guess this, it's a weird way to, this stuff requires you to be like tight and loose at the same time. And that's, I think, one of the hardest things with funk guitar. It's like your body is going to get tight, but then like that will make it come out tight. So it's this weird balance. Now, the magic of a diminished chord is you can move it three frets up or down endlessly across the fretboard. So that's what I do. Three frets higher gives me 10, 8, 10. So yeah, while it's jamming on that A. Three frets, three frets, three frets. Getting all six. And then I was like, all right, well now I'm up here. Here's G minor pentatonic at the 10th fret. So now I'm doing a slightly, which I hear John Frusciante do also, where he'll like anchor and then attack another note. So this one's tricky because I'm going. So you have him anchored and he's sort of down, but not all the time. So. See that? I'm getting him and they're all dead. 10, 12. By the way, I got a new speaker back there. I got a Celestian Blue running in that Mojo Tone cab and that Vox AC15. Dude, they live up to the hype. It, it sounds so good in here. Anyway. So I go around once, do that little tag, come around again. That's just a little bendy. And that one I'm not hitting all six. I'm actually being careful. 13 up, down, 11. And here comes those A diminished again. So I'm like, oh, why can I do that? Um, because... It's just a piece of that one, which is really just a piece of that one, which is a piece of that one. Which it, yeah, it's the magic of diminished. I have another lesson on it where I'm like, I think it's called like how to use diminished for a creepy Nick Cave type effect. And yeah, similar thing. Once you're on one, they can go anywhere so easily and they just sound so demented. So I'm on 11 and 13. And then I'm still just thinking about that little diminished skronk. So just beating the the oh wait now beat the devil out of it as Bob Ross would say. So ten, eight, seven, five, four, two. Because minor third, minor third, minor third, minor third, minor third. Where am I? So same thing. I hit all six and only got that ten. On the way back, I got the eight. And then I'm like, uh, Eric always likes to modulate to E flat major sevenths. I don't know why, I always do. 
five, uh, six, eight, seven, eight. Kind of that same pattern. And then I'm like, oh, I need like a little, which is really just, I'm thinking about an E flat, like an E flat melody for that E flat major seventh chord. I guess that's still key of G minor. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So now I'm doing, yeah, going back to the idea of bashing away at octaves. What was that? So I, I'm always looking at, actually in this one I'm targeting my pinky. 10-7. 8-5. Eight, 8-5. Eight, five. Eleven, seven, eight, and back to that first one. Because I guess, yeah, G minor, that's like a... And then this is a super, um, this is a jazz substitution. Because, yeah, say we're in G minor, this is called a sub five. You can always just play a dominant seventh chord one fret higher than the chord you want to go to. So in this scenario, I'm actually doing an A flat. 13. That would be the full chord, 4, 4, 5, 6. But I, it sounds kind of murky, so I just left out the root because I'm like, ah, Eric, a.k.a. pretending to be Flea, will go ahead and take care of that. So I just tag those, and then, yeah, very... Some kind of, you know, I put a stinger on it. So I think I end up grabbing it with my... Because I'm coming from here. Thumb it for that 3. And yeah, this is a side, I could probably do a whole lesson in G. You have all these cool open pull-offs you can do. So that, that run. Five, three, oh, three. Do the same thing here. Five, three, oh, three. But then I'm coming in on the flat five of the key, the four. Sliding back. Three, so you got power chord. So spicy. The main thing about this lesson is, is the idea of being able to hit all six of your strings and get only one note. Why is that useful? Let's think about it. For me, it's very useful to give a very like aggressive um, percussive attack to a passage uh, because yeah there's a big difference between one note and one note and five clunks um, it, it definitely it has an impact on the audience it has an impact on the other musicians in the room um, for me I noticed I started doing it well it definitely works better on Fender guitars and I play mostly Fender guitars um, you know, doing gigs or rehearsals where you're like, well, I'm, you know, I didn't quite get my volume loud enough and it's time to take a solo. Uh-oh. Bang, bang, bang. You just, I just noticed like, wow, I really, I really beat the crap out of it sometimes. Um, and so do many of my heroes because certain guitars with low output single coil pickups really sound good when you bash away at them like this. Uh, so I definitely noticed as I was teaching it, you know, just a couple of minutes ago, that, that each little bar is really a thing you gotta zone out on to get that hand. It's like the hands are tight and loose at the same time. That's not easy to do. Good luck. Play it slow, play it with soul and uh, funkiness, and uh, most importantly, have fun. Thanks for watching.